All right, so there's a variety of um, types of heat index uh, monitors that you can use. This is an electronic one, this is electronic, this is not this is the, the sling, um, and I'm gonna show you how to use um, all of them. So let's start with the digital, so this is this one, so make sure you take the cap off, okay? And whenever we're doing any um, type of heat monitoring, you always make wanna make sure you're in the center of the playing field, all right? Don't take it off to the side in the shade or anything like that, center of the playing field. So you wanna make sure, we'll zoom in so you can see, make sure you wanna turn it on, okay? And if we turn it on, it should go ahead and give us the temperature. So 72.3 Fahrenheit, and then that's gonna be the humidity on the top. If you want, you can change it to Celsius. Okay, and then we have Celsius down there. If not, hold it and I'll change it back to Fahrenheit. If you happen to want the wet bulb reading because maybe the chart you need or whatever your interpretation, you can go ahead and hold this once. That's gonna give you the TD. The dew point, we don't want to worry about that. And then you want to hold it again until it changes to wet bulb. And so that would be your wet bulb reading. So that's if you need um, a chart, if you need that reading. But if not, we can just go ahead and remove that and it'll take us back to our temperature. All right, so that's kind of how you read and interpret um, the digital psychrometer. So now I'm gonna show you how to use the sling psychrometer. So the sling is old school. Um, you're going to go ahead and pull it out, it should turn. You got to make sure you wet this wick. So put it in some water and make sure that it's wet because this this is going to be your wet um, temperature, your wet bulb, this is going to be your dry. And so then again, you want to stand in the center of the playing field and you want to swing it around for at least a minute, but no more than three, okay? And then when you're done, we're going to need to read it. So this is going to be the tricky part. So I'm going to go ahead and come around to your side so she can go ahead. So you're gonna have this, right? So after you swing it, you turn it over and we're gonna look and just read it like a normal thermometer. So the one that has the, the thread is gonna be our wet and the one that isn't is gonna be our dry. So you have to turn it and just read it like a normal thermometer. And it's probably hard in the video, but this one is, I'm trying to read it, this one is, These are in Celsius. Oh my gosh. This is 20 and then, tw so this is 20 and this is 24-ish, all right, in Celsius, okay? And then what you have to do is then you have to go ahead and you have to remember those numbers and then we have to go ahead and match them up. So you're gonna slide this back in, okay? And then we have to go ahead and match things up. So. If the wet bulb was 20, we'll say the wet bulb was 20 and the dry was 25, we have to line those up. So see how this is the wet and this is the wet. And then this in the middle are going to be our dry readings, the bar that moves, all right? So we have to line up 20 with 25. Well, that's kind of hard using the top. So we can go ahead and go to the bottom here, all right? So we can go ahead and line up our 20, right? Our 25 was our dry, and then we line that up with our wet. So if we do that, okay, and then you're gonna what? You're gonna see an arrow right there. So the arrow's gonna point up, and that's gonna be your humidity. So humidity is eh, about 60%, okay? So let's also then make something else up that's random. So say, for example, our wet was 10, and our dry was 20. So wet, 10, dry 20. So align 10 up with 20, all right? And since I'm using this upper row, the arrow points down and it's gonna say that the humidity is about 22%. All right, so that's how we're gonna go ahead and interpret those. And this just happens to be a Celsius one, but they're also in Fahrenheit, okay? So then once you have those numbers, then you have to go ahead and use a heat index chart. And so here's a picture of a heat index chart, okay? So as you can see on the right hand side, there's the relative humidity and then there's the temperature. So when you're taking those uh, measurements, you're gonna use that. So say for example, the humidity was, seven, was 50 and then the temperature was 90. The heat index would be 95. Say the humidity was 70 
and then the temperature was 88. The heat index would be 100. And so based off of those, you need to take caution, extreme caution, danger, and extreme danger. And so you want to refer to the NATA position statement as far as the protocols for each of those ranges. Caution usually means you're okay. Extreme caution means we need to modify things. So sometimes that's removal of equipment, mandatory water breaks, cold towels, things like that. Danger usually means removal of activity or physical activity, um, and you can't be outdoors. And then obviously extreme danger is like no one should be outside, even you know if you're not doing athletics and things like that. So those are kind of the basics of heat index. And yeah. Awesome.